Have questions after watching one of our videos? No problem, because we have tutorials and guides for every last project we do. It's right on our site. Click the tutorials link and find out any question you have answered right here. What's going on everyone? How are you? First things first, Robert Atkins, you won the charger. This will be coming to you this week, just as soon as I get out to the to the post office. I hate, I hate the post office, but I'm gonna go there for you. And we will be giving more things away. We will be able to give more things away now because of all of you. Also, for those who have watched any of our framing videos and wondered where to get like 0.067, you know, 1 16th inch aluminum angle anywhere and for a good price, we now sell it through our store. Actually, Nate sells it. Actually, this is his shirt. And this is his like business number. And thanks to all of you and many else, Nate, like me, is gonna go full time in his gig. So he's open for business and that was his contact information. Check him out. If you need full on aluminum kits, check out the link in the description area below. And also in the pinned comment section of this video, it will be there along with everything else. Now, dry hatches. They should be right for you now. I understand maybe the bleed out systems that I've always done may or may not have been the most easiest to understand. Otherwise more people would do them. But I more or less cut this down in a very short period of this video. This video is not very long. It's very strict and to the point. I want to give you pretty much the easiest system, our Gen X framing, a full riveted version out of the aluminum we just talked about to make a full water diversion system. I use both systems on my boat, the, bleed, the full bleed out system throughout the core, and then I use this water diversion system, this diversion lip, throughout like my smaller compartments where the bleed out systems, there's just not enough room to run a bleed out system. It actually takes a lot of room to do that. But in this one, the advantage is for the system, though it doesn't do as good a job as a, as a full bleed out system, it still does a really good job of diverting water and you can do it in a more compressed format. You can like really, really frame right around the hatches, around the areas without losing a whole lot of space through the bleed out system. We also sell full on bleed out systems though. If you want a full out bleed out system, Nate also sells those on our site. Check it out, check out everything, but check out this video first. Last we left off, we gutted the entire boat, and we left off right installing the subfloor. That had to be done right at the very front of the boat before we can go any farther. We gave it a .063 aluminum subfloor, which is fairly comparable in size to a 3 8 piece of plywood. But it'll last forever. Sweet. We secured that thing down with some 3 16th inch thick rivets. And that is our base. It's like a perfect box in the middle of the boat. It's perfect for a rod locker. So this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna frame these day boxes. These are seven gallon totes that I got from Home Depot. And they will fit the large tackle trays. They will fit like three or four of them in here. So that's epic in and of itself because that's what we're gonna, so these are really gonna be on each side what he's going to be mainly accessing for most of the day that's plenty then you'll have your large dry storage if he wants to if he wants to stack more to do it is frame this one in first get that where it needs to be here because this does need to be here we're going to be we're going we're to be framing in the pedestal mount there so this little section will be with that's right where it was before and then right below that, we're gonna stick rod tubes and we'll have a pretty good cutoff. That's a fairly, I would like this to be the cutoff, honestly, but he needs a butt seat area. He needs it. Everybody needs a butt seat on the bass boat. It's for those long days. Okay, so no longer do we let like the height of the tote determine the height of the deck. We just cut the tote and we give it a true aluminum lip and we keep the deck wherever we wanna keep it. And that strengthens up the tote significantly. And then we're gonna add a very simple dry hatch feature. We're gonna add an inside lip to the whole thing. And that's gonna give a pretty good water diversion system. I've tried it out in my boat for so long. I have to wash my boat down a lot because the turf gets dirty and no water ever gets into the toast themselves as long as the sides are sealed. Normally cutting the lips off of these totes would really compromise the strength of them. 
but when you rivet them directly into the angled lips themselves, the aluminum lips are way stronger than the plastic lip stock on the tote we're ever going to be in the first place. We are eventually going to be doing full aluminum compartments, but for now, the tote here is the easiest and simplest way to make like a four walled structure that's completely sealed off and waterproof. It is super easy to repair with just a soldering iron. So that's why we still use totes and that's why we're using them here for the dry hatch systems to hold everything that's dear and precious that you're gonna want to keep dry. So, I have a bunch of this excess half inch angle, bend it very tactfully. This is 1 16th inch thick, or 0 0.063 for the exact measurement, 6063 architectural grade aluminum. It is perfect for projects like these. And we have it in the description area of our video below. It's to our understanding that a lot of local metal shops don't carry aluminum that thin. So we have found a way to make it available for everyone. If you want to check it out, check the description area of this video below and also the pinned comment section for this video. Water. It looks pretty freaking good. Wherever you mark this aluminum to bend it, if you're gonna do it this way, you have to shave it off by like 1 16th inch right before you cut. That way it actually fits and compensates for the actual bend of the aluminum. Or you could just cut it and slot it in four slots if that's easier. Later on, we raise it up completely flush to get rid of any of the overlay problems because we're eventually going to skin this. We decided to do this a little bit later and raise it up all the way flush like this. But the way I showed you right now is overlay. Not a big deal unless you're going to skin it. And we'll show you how we did that here a little bit later. But for now, that's the video now. Let me know what you That's it, think. everyone. Wait for this series. Check us out as we try and transform this Tracker V18, this vintage, awesome single stamped aluminum hull, into something that's comparable to that of a Z18 Nitro. Wait for it.